Okay, welcome to my presentation of the New School Narrative. My name is Katharina Muller-Cornell and I'm normally residing in the Netherlands, <clears throat> apart from this week where I'm in Florida for a conference. I'm not a teacher, I'm a researcher at a university and I do have a teaching load which is, well, so so low that I don't consider myself teaching. And the teaching I have to do is on in an uh, online school for health professionals who want to learn how to design courses. And the unit in which I am in, which is about organizational change and management, well, the unit is, as a teacher, I have to grade three assignments at that's it. I don't see the students. For that, I have taught face-to-face -face in bachelor courses and online in bachelor courses and also in other teacher pro pro professionalization courses. Let's start now with this narrative, or with my presentation about a new school narrative. And I, when I started the MOOC, I thought, yeah, why not? It sounds interesting. No idea when I would ever create a school, if I would ever do it, and um, it gave me a nice idea how to how it would look. So a lot of things are still fuzzy simply because I don't have to be specific on them right now. But I have decided to make it a hybrid school, and I have decided to make it a teacher community school. So a hybrid teacher community school, and it's a school where teachers share the students. And I got the idea from talking with Patrick. And the idea behind it is that teachers have different interests within the discipline, but they have to also teach things that they don't really like that much within the discipline. So why not share the students and say, somebody likes, if you now take history as a discipline, somebody likes the uh, Second World War period very much, and the other one really likes uh, the medieval period. So they are just switch students whenever they have to teach something they don't really like or they don't like that much. And the reason to have this is that if you're passionate about something, you're engaged in it and this comes across the way you teach. So if we force all teachers to teach things they don't like, there will be in certain times where the teacher will be low motivated because he has to do it because he has to do it and other times will be yeah, all happy because now he teaches, he has to teach us something which he likes. So why not simply make it a way that students get the whole time teachers which are very, who are very motivated because they can all the time teach something which they really, really like. So it's a, that's why it's a teacher community and it's teachers sharing their students. But let's go more into it. So, so what about the mission of the school? Well, first it is important, for me, it is important that learning is driven by curiosity and therefore the mission of the school is to keep the curiosity alive and give students the tools to collect, analyze and synthesize the information they gather to make sense of their surrounding. So if you want to learn you need to engage in learning and you engage in learning if you really want to understand something and if you want to understand something you need to collect the information about it and from this you can really see that I'm a researcher and that I like to dig into things. <clears throat> but let's now enter the school I envisioned and what do we find on a pedagogical aspect well first before I go into that I want to reinforce again that the education that the school the hybrid school I envision it is supplemental education so we'll never offer the full curriculum because then I just need to make sure that I have all, all, all the teachers but the teachers join the community because they want to and it will supplement the physical the education the students will get at a physical school or it will give students the education they cannot get at the, at the physical school. So we have students with different ability le levels who join it because they're really passionate about a certain topic or because well, the topic which is taught there is one which their teacher don't really want to, to um, teach but which they can take in the online school. And because it is online, well it's hybrid because they have some classes face to face with their traditional teacher and then they have classes with the online teachers, so therefore it's hybrid, but it's a global student body. If we now look at the pedagogy of the school, 
Well, here in Maastricht, Maastricht in, in the Netherlands, we call it problem-based learning, but a better word for it will be inquiry-based learning or something where you really want to just just inquire and, and find out of it. And um, so the knowledge the students gain, it is it comes from their own construction of finding the building blocks of finding the information they need to understand a problem and putting them together in a way which makes sense of their world. And then I'm not going that far that um, they're all different truths and if the student wants to make up that 2 plus 2 is 5, well, of course, he then needs to find the right proofs that you could have a different... Um, uh, a different, uh, how do you call it in English? A different number system. You, but the student needs to learn certain facts and he needs to find the information to come to those facts. And then the problems on which they work need to be authentic and then ideally they need to be driven by their own, what they see in their own community. So if there's now a student who sees that they have problems with water supply in the summer, he or she wants to figure out why and how this can be uh, solved and then that's where the causes come in. Now going to the teachers, as teachers share the students, teachers need, as teachers share the students, students need to get the same signal from all the teachers. So the teachers need to have a shared mental model of what learning is, what teaching is, and what grading is, because at the end of the day, you need to have some product and you need to have some measure if the product meets the meets the goals the teacher put for that course. And what is also important within for this aspect of the new school is that great learning experiences. Are, we do have great learning experience because we had great teachers. If you read through the post of week one where we had to reflect on your, on our own school, it all boiled down to I remember this and I really like this and I enjoyed this because of the teacher. That's why the teachers of this hybrid school need to feel that this is um this is theirs. Because if you if you own the teaching in a um not a possessive way, but in a way that you feel this is this is my work. I can change it if I want to change it. I have the 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 freedom to adapt my teaching to my needs. But if I do something wrong, I'm not directly kicked out. So you need to have freedom and you need to have um, psychological safety. So you, you need to feel safe to do risk. Then you create ownership within the teachers to to own their teaching and to own the subject and to own what they want to do with the students. As the research process or as the teaching process in this school is based on research, the teacher next to being a subject matter expert also needs to be a research coach. So he or she needs to know how research happens and what, what you need to do for it, what are different research me methods. Therefore, the hiring process will be that the teacher needs to do and present his or her own research pro project. Because through that, you could see if the teacher still, how much passion the teacher has in his or her own subject and, and if he or she is able to actually collect, synthesize and analyze information. Now going to the student mix, I didn't spend that much time thinking about it because it's hybrid so it's wherever you are you can join and it is English based so first thing which came into mind were countries with where the native language is English. Of course people who just want to follow a course in English could just also join. I may have an uh, entry requirements for all um, for all students to pass a certain level of English, because in hybrid schools, what is what happens easier is miscommunication because you just you know if it's just text based you just read, and you can't say if you don't understand it you have to write an email and it needs time for the reply to come. So everything needs to be very, very explicit and clear. Everything written needs to be very explicit and clear. And every student needs to understand it also without without having to ask what does this word mean. And uh, this also brings me to a point I have for... Uh, yeah, so it will be a global student body and an entry requirement in English so that to make sure that everybody speaks their right level 
is fluent in English. Before I go to the neighborhood, I just want to quickly touch up on the aspect of facility. Um, at my university, we use um, the learning management system of Blackboard. I don't know who is fam familiar with it, but it's it's not teacher friendly and it's not student friendly. And it's um, the only reason we have it. It's because they more or less have a monopoly on learning management system, and all the universities in the Netherlands have Blackboard. So the learning management system uh, operator within the universities, they talk with each other, say, oh, hey, yeah, you're out. we took Blackboard, yeah, okay, let's take Bla Blackboard. Because then if there's a problem, you can talk w w with your colleague, understandable, fair, but I don't like it, and I have not yet found a teacher who likes to work with it. So I think the main problem is to find something which I like and which students would like, which is easy to understand and which is not cumbersome. And I have seen via the block of um, Walking Airplane a learning management system made for project-based learning. And that sounds, it sounds and looks very interesting from what I've seen. And of course, well, then you have the facility cost with regard to the technical platform. The nice thing would be that it is maintained by somebody outside so that I don't really have to think about it. So that the only thing I, as principal of that school, would have to do is to um, just more focus on, on, on the teachers and the facility design. I don't have to consider a lot. And one thing which needs to be in that school is that every subject Every course or every project begins with face-to-face, -face, so with synchronous meetings. And why? Because you need to create a community. And y you can't really create it with text. Even if you use pictures and emicons and, you know, speak in a certain... speak informal, it's just not the same. And um, we have tried it with just text-based in, in, in some summer courses, having a like, sort of a cafe area within the online school. No, it's... Um, it's not the way to do, it's not the way to go, and you should have, every course needs to begin with a face-to-face -face meeting, and it needs to have, and, and should end with a face-to-face -face meeting. With face-to-face, -face, I mean simply synchronous communication, and that's a must. And, well, it would be really nice if it's once a year everybody comes together at, at the same spot. Yeah, that, that would be nice, but not really necessary. So coming to the neighborhood, I mean, it's online school, so the neighborhood of the school is just whatever you have outside the window. And with this, I, I thank you for paying uh, attention to my narrative, and I hope I wasn't too fuzzy and that you could make sense of something, of some of the thoughts which have, have been going around in my head while I, while I took this course. Thanks for the effort. Thanks for putting it together. It was fun taking it. Thank you. Bye.